Welcome to Train Engineers Newsletter Live program. I'm Jeannie Harshaw and today we'll discuss controls for small rooftop systems. We'll start with a brief overview of HVAC related needs of small building customers. And while these small buildings can use several types of HVAC equipment, today we're going to focus on various types of systems that use packaged rooftop units and the control options available for each. Then we'll review some other control capabilities that may be desired by the same customers. And finally, we'll discuss how to specify the controls for these small rooftop systems to ensure that customers get what they expect. Today we have Melissa Schumann, Train Controls Sales Support Leader, Jim Cole, a Controls Product Manager, and Applications Engineer John Murphy to cover this topic. So, Melissa, can you start us off by discussing the HVAC-related needs of small building customers? Small building HVAC systems typically consist of constant volume rooftop units controlled by thermostats, but the world is changing. IoT, the Internet of Things, codes, consumer expectations, the cloud, big data, 24-7 access, cybersecurity, all of these factors are changing how people interact with their HVAC systems and therefore changing how systems in these small buildings are designed and controlled. Technology has already changed the world. Paper maps and our sense of direction have been replaced by GPS. We can manage our bank accounts from our phones and we can watch TV on demand without commercials. Technology in our industry has already changed in some important ways. Energy codes and regulations have pushed higher efficiencies in rooftop equipment and codes are requiring variable speed fan control demand controlled ventilation, and automatic fault detection in small rooftop units. Consumers' expectations have grown based on their experience with their home thermostats and phone apps, which offer on-demand access from anywhere at any time. More data from rooftops allows for more trending and diagnostics for service providers, and people are demanding more comfortable working environments. These changes have required more sophisticated controls in these smaller buildings. So next, we'll look at how this is all affecting the small building HVAC market. This chart depicts the small building market space with the HVAC budget on the x-axis and the complexity of the system on the y-axis. On the left, we start with price-driven simple systems, largely controlled by thermostats. The thermostats are operated by untrained, often changing staff. On the other end of the spectrum, we find the traditional building automation. Traditional BAS often is composed of complex systems, chiller plants, for example, and often there's trained staff in these buildings called building operators. This is pretty rare for small buildings, so we won't talk any more about traditional BAS during this ENL. However, in between, a space exists for low-cost building automation, where owners don't have maintenance staff but may desire the comfort of a zone system. Examples in this middle space are churches, car dealerships, gyms, small schools, banks, restaurants, and retail spaces, to name a few. A typical barrier to entry in this middle space is the building owner's lack of awareness of options. They may be familiar with thermostats and think of BAS as being too costly or complex, but may not be aware of the control products in this middle space. Next, this chart depicts the common user profiles we encounter in these smaller building types. On the bottom left of the spectrum, we have the business owner or manager, who typically has little technical HVAC experience. They might not know what a rooftop or VAV box is. We often say they don't know what's above the ceiling tile. From a manager perspective, turnover is high and they have less invested in their workplace HVAC than they do in their residential system. A business owner differs in that their main concern is running their business. They rely on their contractor for buying recommendations about HVAC equipment and controls. The next person on the spectrum is the installer. This person works for a mechanical contractor and has domain knowledge about HVAC equipment installation and repair, but probably limited knowledge about controls. There are often many installers in a contractor's organization. Another person who often works in a mechanical contracting firm is a service technician. This person understands both HVAC equipment and controls well. Often there are one or two type of this person in a firm 
and they often have experience in several different control systems since they need this knowledge to service a broad range of customers. In regional or multi-building scenarios, there's a property manager who has responsibilities ranging from managing schedules across several buildings to dispatching maintenance. In this case, the day-to-day -day manager of the business has very little interaction with the HVAC system and relies on the property manager who is often remote. Let's dive a little deeper into the needs of the business owners and the installers in this market space. Owners or managers are looking to perform a few tasks simply. This includes simple after-hours override, adjusting set points, and modifying schedules. Often they are looking for energy efficiency, and they might want simple lighting control or to also control a few ancillary pieces of equipment like restroom exhaust fans. Installers are looking for controls that are low cost, easy to install, and easy to service. And many want controls for zone systems, which they can use to differentiate themselves from their competitors. Now that we have examined users and their needs, let's overview the typical system types used in these buildings. While smaller buildings can use several types of HVAC equipment and systems, today we're going to focus on systems that use packaged rooftop units. This is a factory assembled product that provides cooling, heating, and ventilation in a single piece of equipment. It is popular in smaller buildings since it simplifies system design, installation, and maintenance. A small package rooftop typically contains a plenum for mixing outdoor air with recirculated air, a filter, cooling coil, either a gas-fired burner, an electric heater or hot water coil, a supply fan controls, and all the components of a direct expansion refrigeration system. Most use an air-cooled condenser, like the example shown here, but sometimes a water-cooled or evaporative condenser is used instead. As its name implies, this type of equipment is typically installed outdoors on the roof of the building, or sometimes on the ground next to the building. The systems that use these packaged rooftop units can be categorized as single-zone systems or multiple-zone systems. A single zone system uses one rooftop unit to serve a single space or thermal zone. A temperature sensor in that zone is used to determine how much heating or cooling is needed. The next category, a multiple zone system, uses one rooftop unit to serve several thermal zones or spaces. A VAV terminal unit serves each zone, each with its own temperature sensor. This sensor is used to determine how much cooling or heating is needed in its zone, and the VAV terminal modulates airflow, and if needed, activates a heater to maintain the zone at its set point. There are a few different types of multiple zone systems that commonly use packaged rooftops. We'll dive deeper into all of them in a little bit, but first Jim is going to talk about the options available for controlling these systems. Jim? The most common solution used in small rooftop equipment has been commercial thermostats. Contractors prefer thermostats because they're easy to install. They're usually the lowest cost but least capable solution. Set points and schedules have to be adjusted locally. But many in the industry are moving away from these because they do not satisfy the requirements and expectations customers now have. Examples include optimized control, fault detection, diagnostics, support for mobile devices, or the improved comfort available by using a zone system. To enable some of these new capabilities, web-enabled and smart thermostats have been, become more common, growing at a rate of 15% per year. While the hardware cost is higher than traditional thermostats, installation is still relatively simple and does not require a controls technician to complete the work. Another available option is a communicating thermostat mounted on the wall that directly controls the rooftop unit. The advantage of these devices is that they can communicate the actual room temperature and the desired set point. This is needed for the equipment that varies the speed of fans or compressors, or that modulates heater capacity. Variable speed or modulating controls are disabled by traditional thermostats because they do not communicate this information to the equipment controller, so the equipment is only capable of staged control. 
While there are very few options available today, we expect that the demand for the increased efficiency and quieter operation provided by variable speed equipment will result in additional and more economical options in the future. Another option is a small building control system. These typically support the same capabilities as web-enabled or smart thermostats, but they add the ability to support variable speed equipment and multiple zone systems for better comfort and higher efficiency. These small building control systems can also include advanced diagnostic and energy management capabilities and can be used to also provide some simple lighting control or control of other equipment like exhaust fans or boilers. Ease of use is enhanced through a reduction in the number of user interfaces required. And installation wizards, service screens, and remote diagnostics also allow these small building control systems to now be installed and be serviced by mechanical contractors with a minimal amount of training. Finally, as Melissa said, these small buildings typically don't have the need or budget for building operators or advanced user interfaces. However, businesses that have multiple building sites, such as retail and restaurant chains, often hire their own staff or hire a contractor to manage their facilities. Remote access to operating and diagnostic information can help reduce downtime and reduce tenant churn by improving comfort, resulting in an improved bottom line for the building owner. With that overview of customer needs and the types of control solutions available for these small buildings, let's now dive into the various small rooftop system types. John? Thanks, Jeannie. As we discuss each of the small package rooftop systems, and their various control options, we'll refer back to this example building. This is a typical branch bank, 2,300 square feet in total. The main space is a lobby where customers interact with tellers behind the counter. There's also three private offices, an employee break room, restrooms, conference room, and an entrance vestibule. Then down there in the lower left-hand corner is a small server room that houses the drive-through ATM but that will be served by a dedicated ductless split system. Now starting with the single zone systems, as Melissa described, one rooftop unit is used to serve a single thermal zone. But in this category, rooftop unit might use a constant speed fan, make it in a constant volume system, or a variable speed fan, making it a single zone VAV system. Now starting with the constant volume system, again, the supply fan operates at a constant speed. A temperature sensor in the zone is used to determine how much cooling or heating is needed, and then compressors or a heater are cycled on and off to maintain zone temperature at set point. The outdoor air damper position is set to bring in the required CFM of outdoor air for ventilation. Or this damper might be open further when it's cool outside for air site economizing. The single zone constant volume system is commonly used for large open spaces such as cafeterias, auditoriums, gymnasiums, warehouses, retail stores, or restaurants. It's simple and well understood by many industry professionals and customers, and it's often used to provide separate systems for multiple small tenants, like in a strip mall. Or multiple units can be grouped together to serve a large zone like a warehouse. However, energy use is higher than the VAV system alternatives. And if a single unit is used to serve a zone that's made up of several dissimilar spaces, comfort issues often arise. Due to constant airflow, dehumidification suffers at part load conditions, often necessitating the use of hot gas reheat to prevent indoor humidity levels from rising too high. And finally, if several single zone rooftops are used to provide more zones of control, it increases the number of building penetrations and gas and electricity connections. Let's look at this system in our example building. Here we're using one package rooftop unit to serve the entire building. Supplier is ducted to diffusers in the various spaces and grills in those spaces allow air to return back to the unit through an open ceiling plenum. For this single zone system, the temperature sensor is installed in the lobby. Note also 
that the restrooms each have a dedicated exhaust fan. And as I mentioned earlier, the ATM server room is conditioned by a separate ductless split system. All the control options I mentioned earlier can be used for a single zone, constant volume equipment. While programmable th thermostats are still the most common solution used, regulatory requirements, the desire for remote access, and improved ease of use are driving increased adoption of web-enabled and smart thermostats. Small building control systems will make sense on larger installations, think 10 or more rooftop units, where the installed cost can be similar. Or will make sense when the customer desires the advanced diagnostics and easier operation. So what do we mean by advanced diagnostics? Thermostats do provide the ability to know if the rooftop is expected to provide cooling or heating, the number of cooling or heating stages requested, and if the equipment is delivering the expected supply air temperature. Certain models can also provide simple fault detection, like economizer failures required by some energy codes. However, some small building control systems are capable of mining all of the communicated information from every piece of equipment, which can be 25 times the amount of information on a rooftop unit. With remote access enabled, this added level of detail allows the service provider to not only know if the unit needs a service call, but maybe even fix the problem remotely or with a single trip by a technician. Now let's move on to the next single zone system, single zone VAV. Here, the supply fan operates at a variable speed, varying the CFM delivered to the zone. The temperature sensor in the zone is used to determine how much cooling or heating is needed. But in this case, the rooftop unit controller adjusts both the fan speed and the compressor or heater capacity to maintain, to maintain zone temperature at set point. Now the controller also adjusts the outdoor air damper position to bring in the required CFM of outdoor air as the fan speed changes. Now this chart depicts an example single zone VV system control sequence. The x-axis is the sensible load in the zone, and the y-axis shows fan speed and the supply air temperature set point. On the far right side of this chart, when the zone is in the design cooling load, the fan is operating at maximum speed and delivering the minimum supply air temperature for cooling, say 55 degrees. As the zone cooling load decreases, moving to the left, the fan speed is slowed down to reduce supply airflow. Compressors are then staged or modulated to maintain the supplier temperature at this same cold set point. When the cooling load decreases to the point where the fan has reached minimum speed, the supplier temperature has to be gradually reset upward to avoid overcooling the zone. Then when the zone temperature drops below its cooling set point into the dead band, the fan continues to operate at minimum speed with no compressors or heaters operating. Now let's consider what happens when the zone requires heating, which is the left half of this chart. The fan continues to operate at minimum speed, and the supplier temperature is now reset upward further so it's warmer than the zone. Heating capacity is now modulated to maintain this supply air set point. When the heating load increases to the point where the supplier temperature set point reaches a preset maximum limit, say 90 degrees, the supply fan now begins to speed up, increasing airflow delivered to the zone, while heating capacity is modulated to maintain the supplier temperature at this maximum limit. Now note that this sequence varies the fan speed in both cooling and heating modes. This is possible if modulating heat is used in the rooftop unit, such as modulating gas burner, an SCR electric heater, or a hot water valve with a modulating valve. But if stage heat is used instead, the rooftop may not be able to vary airflow when the heater is operating. In this case, the control sequence will vary airflow during cooling, just like I explained, but then operates the fan at maximum speed whenever the heater is activated. That is, if the zone temperature drops below the heating set point, the heater is cycled on to warm up the zone with the fan running at maximum speed. Once the zone temperature is raised back into the dead band, 
The heater cycles off, and the fan again backs down to minimum speed. Now, there's one other variation I want to show. Some single zone VAB rooftops actually use two speed fan control rather than varying fan speed across the range between maximum and minimum. In this case, when the zone is at design cooling load on the far right hand side of this chart, the fan is operating at maximum speed with both compressors on. As the cooling load decreases and one compressor cycles off, the fan is then switched to operate at minimum speed. So the fan speed stages as compressors are staged on and off. In the dead band again, the fan continues to operate at minimum speed with no compressors or heaters operating. Then when the zone reaches heating, or requires heating, the heater is cycled on and off to warm up the zone with the fan operating at maximum speed. Once the zone temperature is back up in the dead band, the heater cycles off and the fan goes back down to minimum speed. This single zone VAV system is an alternative to constant volume for those same large open spaces I mentioned earlier. And it has many of the same advantages and limitations as the constant volume system. But the use of a variable speed fan results in lower energy use, better dehumidification, and quieter operation at part load conditions. For our example building, the layout is the same as in the other single zone system. One rooftop unit to serve the entire building with a temperature sensor installed in the lobby. As Melissa mentioned though, when a single unit is used to serve a zone that's made up of several spaces like this, comfort might be compromised. This chart shows the temperature variation over the course of the day in different areas of the building. In the lobby, where the zone sensor is mounted, you can see that the temperature is controlled to the desired set point. But in the north and the south offices, the temperature varies above or below the set point throughout the day. So what can we do to improve this? Well, you could install multiple temperature sensors in different areas of the building and average their readings. This is pretty easy when using wireless controls. Here, additional sensors are installed. One behind the teller counter, one on the north side of the building, one of the offices on the north side of the building, and finally down here in the conference room. The rooftop unit controller averages the readings from all four sensors to determine the required control action. Now thinking back to that chart, I would expect maybe a little more temperature variation in the lobby since it's no longer the sole dictator, but better temperature control in these other areas of the building. Another option could be to install additional single zone rooftop units, each serving different areas of this building. This would provide more zones of control, but increases the installed cost as well as the number of building penetrations and utility connections. Or you could use a multiple zone system instead, which we'll look at in a little bit. But first, let's look at the control options for single zone VAV. From a system control standpoint, a single zone VAV system is similar to the constant volume system. But thermostats with electromechanical interfaces disable the variable speed functionality. And the rooftop unit will revert to just two-speed fan control, as John showed. So, if a traditional thermostat is used, the rooftop unit will not deliver as much energy savings as true variable speed fan control. Communicating thermostats which transmit the current temperature and set point solve this problem. They enable variable speed fan control at a slightly higher cost, but they don't have all the features available in smart thermostats. Like traditional or Wi-Fi thermostats, one communicating thermostat is required for each rooftop unit, but they don't coordinate control operating in a standalone fashion. Consequently, set point and schedule changes are all done one at a time. Small building control systems can be cost effective on many projects and are needed if centralized control, advanced diagnostics, or control of other common devices like exhaust fans or a boiler is required. From a user experience perspective, when a building uses several single zone rooftop units, each controlled by a thermostat, we often find that while they're easy to use, anyone can change the set point or schedule. Occupants may turn up the set point in one area, which might cause one rooftop to operate in heating 
while another in an adjacent area is cooling. And temperature control is distributed throughout the building, so adjustments are not centralized. Some owners take some interesting steps to maintain control. For example, a daycare center might wire all the thermostats back to a central office. Another example is a small school or church that hosts after-hours events like a weekend basketball tournament or an evening meeting. This need for a temporary schedule adjustment often results in a permanent change when the hold feature on the thermostat is used, wasting a significant amount of energy. Up to 20% energy savings can be achieved through resuming scheduled operation from a 24-7 hold. In order to avoid this, some clients resort to mounting the thermostat in a locked box to prevent adjustment, but this results in no user experience at all. Now let's move on to the multiple zone systems. Here, one rooftop unit is used to serve multiple thermal zones. But there are a few different types of multiple zone systems. We'll just start by discussing changeover bypass systems. As with all of the multiple zone systems, each zone is equipped with a VAV terminal unit. A temperature sensor in that zone is used to determine how much cooling or heating is needed and then the VAV terminal modulates airflow to maintain zone temperature at set point. In this change or bypass system, the supply fan operates at a constant speed, continuously during occupied mode. And a bypass damper is installed between the supply and return air ductwork. As the zone VAV terminals dampers modulate further closed, this central bypass damper modulates further open to allow excess supply airflow to recirculate back to the rooftop unit. This damper is controlled using a pressure sensor installed in the supply duct. So this allows variable airflow to the zones while still using a constant speed fan. In this system, the VAV terminals typically include only a damper with no terminal heat. This damper modulates the flow of either cool air or warm air to maintain zone temperature. Then the control system uses a voting strategy to determine whether the rooftop unit should supply cool air down the duct or change over and supply warm air. The controller on each VAV terminal votes based on the cooling or heating need of its zone. As the temperature gets further away from set point, its voting strength is increased. Now, when the rooftop unit is operating in heating mode, it delivers warm air to all the VAV terminals. If a zone requires heating, on the left-hand side of this chart, the VAV damper modulates between minimum and maximum airflow to maintain the zone temperature at heating set point. However, if the zone requires cooling, while this rooftop unit is supplying warm air, the VAV damper closes to its minimum heating airflow set point, and its controller begins to vote, asking the rooftop unit to change over to cooling mode. Now, when the rooftop unit's operating in cooling mode, it's delivering cool air to all the VAV terminals. If the zone requires cooling, the VAV damper modulates between minimum and maximum airflow to maintain the zone at cooling set point. Again, if the, heat, if the zone requires heating, the damper closes to its minimum cooling airflow set point, and again, the controller begins to vote for the system to change over back to heating mode. As with all the multiple zone alternatives, the changeover bypass system allows a single rooftop unit to serve several zones, providing independent temperature control in each zone. This can often be more economical than installing several small single zone rooftop units with fewer building penetrations and fewer utility connections. This changeover bypass zoning solution has been used in small buildings for many years so it's familiar to most installers and it works with any constant volume rooftop unit, which can make it attractive in a retrofit scenario. However, energy use and sound levels are higher than the VAV system alternatives because of the constant speed fan. And since it's a changeover system, there can still be comfort issues if the zones being served have very dissimilar loads. This might be the case when interior and perimeter zones are served by the same rooftop unit. Going back to our example building, here again we're using one package rooftop unit to serve the entire building. But in this case, 
the supply air is ducted to four VAV terminals, which then control airflow to each of the four zones. Zone number one is the north side of the building, which includes two private offices and a break room. This zone sensor is located in one of those offices. Zone two includes the area behind the teller counter on the west side of the building. Zone three is the customer lobby in the center of the building. And zone four is the south side of the building, which includes a private office, entrance vestibule, and the conference room. For this zone, the sensor is located in this conference room. Again, as I mentioned, the change or bypass system requires a bypass damper shown here ducted between the supply and return air ducts. And finally, a system control panel is needed to coordinate the operation of the rooftop unit with the VAV terminals. As we move to multiple zone systems, thermostats are no longer sufficient. A small building control system is required to coordinate operation of the rooftop unit with the VAV terminals. However, not all control systems support all system types, so make sure you understand the capabilities of the small building solutions you're considering. Ease of installation is key to delivering an acceptable install cost, as is diagnostic information to quickly and easily troubleshoot the system. I'll talk about installation and diagnostics later in the presentation. The next multiple zone system is an evolution of the changeover bypass system. It's called a changeover VAV system. In this system, the rooftop unit includes a variable speed supply fan, so a bypass damper may not be required. Now in this case, as the VAV dampers modulate further close, the speed of the supply fan is reduced to deliver only the CFM currently required by the zones. The fan is then controlled using a pressure sensor installed in the supply duct. Again, the VAV terminals often include only a damper with no heat. And the control system uses a voting strategy to determine whether the rooftop unit should supply cool air or warm air down the duct. This changeover VAV system has some of the same advantages as the changeover bypass system. But the use of a variable speed fan results in lower energy use and quieter operation at part load conditions. And a bypass damper may not be required, which simplifies control and installation. But as I mentioned earlier, in either changeover system, there can be comfort issues if the zones served by the rooftop unit have very dissimilar loads. To improve occupant comfort and flexibility in either of these changeover systems, you might consider equipping some of the VAV terminals with an electric heater or maybe a hot water coil. Then, when the rooftop unit is operating in cooling mode, this allows some amount of heat to be provided to a zone that currently requires heating. In this application, when the rooftop unit is supplying in the heating mode, the local heater is disabled and the VAV damper is controlled as I described previously. If the zone requires heating, the damper modulates between minimum and maximum air flows, but if the zone requires cooling, the damper closes to the minimum air flow set point, and the controller votes for a changeover to cooling mode. But when the rooftop unit is operating in the cooling mode, the local heater is now enabled. If the zone requires cooling, again, the damper modulates between minimum and maximum air flows while the heater remains off. But if the zone requires heating, the damper is controlled to a minimum set point while the local heater is now staged on and off to prevent the zone from overcooling. In this case, the VV controller will not submit a vote to change over to heating mode unless the local heater is no longer able to maintain the zone at its heating set point. Now usually this local heater is only sized to prevent overcooling during mild or cooled weather. During very cold weather, the rooftop unit will change over to operate in the heating mode and provides all the heat required. Now, note that this chart depicts the control sequence for staged heat. But if the VAV terminal is equipped with either a SCR electric heater or a modulating hot water valve, the dual max control sequence can be used. When the zone requires cooling on the right side of this chart, the control sequence is unchanged. But when the zone requires heating, 
the VEB damper opens to its minimum position and the controller resets the discharge air temperature set point upward so it's warmer than the zone. Then the heater modulates capacity to maintain this current discharge set point. If this discharge set point reaches a preset maximum limit, say 90 degrees, and the zone still requires more heat, the VAV damper now begins to modulate further open, increasing airflow delivered to the zone, while the heater modulates to maintain this discharge air at this set point temperature maximum limit. Now this sequence provides the benefit of increased airflow when heating and better comfort by reducing temperature stratification in the zone. Like with the other changeover system, this changeover VV system also uses one package rooftop unit that supplies air to four VAV terminals. In this case, a bypass damper is not needed. This really depends on the type of heater used in the rooftop unit. Here I'm showing the VAV terminals without heat, but as I said, it is an option to improve comfort. And finally, a system control panel is used to coordinate operation of these various components. In order to take full advantage of the benefits provided by a changeover VAV system, such as lower energy costs and a quieter environment, the small building control system must be capable of supporting these more advanced system types. Consequently, you want to be sure to specify this capability. And as I said earlier, you want it to be easily installed, operated, and serviced by the contractor or building owner. The last multiple zone system we'll discuss is a VAV system with terminal heat. Again, the rooftop unit includes a variable speed fan, so a bypass damper is not required. In this case, most or all the VAV terminals are equipped with electric or hot water heat. So rather than changing over between cooling and heating operation, the rooftop unit supplies air down the duct at a cool temperature year round. And when compressors or air side economizing are used to cool this air, this is pretty straightforward. But what if it's cold enough outside that the mixed air drops below the desired supplier temperature set point? If the rooftop unit is equipped with modulating heat, the controller modulates the capacity of the heater to maintain the current supplier temperature set point, while fan speed still modulates to maintain duct pressure at set point. To operate in this mode, consider equipping the rooftop unit with either a special modulating gas heater that's capable of sufficient capacity turndown, or an SCR electric heater. Or, if the VAV terminals are equipped with hot water coils, I think it makes sense to equip the rooftop with a hot water coil also, since the building is going to have a hot water system anyway. But, if staged heat is used instead, the rooftop unit might not be able to vary airflow when the heater is operating. So if the mixed air temperature drops below the supply air set point, we're relying on the heat in the VV terminals to warm the air. But if they don't have enough capacity, some zones might drop below their heating set point when it gets very cold outside. If this happens, the system enters daytime warm-up mode. The VAV dampers are all commanded to maximum airflow, and the supply fan ramps up to full speed, and the heater is cycled on to deliver warm air down the duct to all the zones. When the cold zones have warmed back up, the system returns to normal operation. The heater in the rooftop cycles off, the fan slows back down to maintain duct pressure at set point, and the VV boxes are allowed to modulate closed once again. Again, the multiple zone VAV system with terminal heat has some of the same advantages as the other multiple zone systems. But having heat in the terminals means this system is capable of providing heat to some zones while providing cooling to other zones. This can significantly improve comfort. However, heat in the terminals does increase installed cost. And if hot water is used for heating, it requires additional controls for the boilers and pumps. Again, in our example building, one package rooftop unit supplies air to four VAV terminals. But in this case, each of those terminals is equipped with an electric heater. No bypass damper is required, 
but a system control panel, shown here mounted in the employee break room, is needed to coordinate system operation. Now, as Melissa just said, comfort performance is usually improved with this system. To demonstrate, here's that same temperature control chart I showed earlier. But this time, it shows the performance of a multiple zone system, where each zone has its own VAV terminal unit equipped with an electric heater. In contrast to the single zone system, here the temperature of all the zones are controlled right to the desired set point. Again, a small building control system is required to coordinate operation of the rooftop unit with the VAV terminals. And as I said, be sure to specify these capabilities to ensure you provide the expected comfort and performance that these systems are intended to deliver. Finally, while I've not mentioned this since early on in the program, for those customers where a multi-site solution is required, this can be accomplished with either web-enabled thermostats or small building control systems. Ease of installation is key to delivering an acceptable install cost, as is diagnostic information to quickly and easily troubleshoot the system. For example, some small building control systems provide installation wizards for the contractor to follow a step-by-step -step process. In this example, the installation wizard does this work in the background for all system types. Consequently, most of the programming done by the controls technician on traditional BAS projects is not required on small building systems. This reduces installation time and minimizes the knowledge and training required for the installer. It's also important to check to ensure that appropriate optimization strategies like duct static pressure optimization are supported. Similar user interfaces can be made available for the service technician. As Melissa mentioned earlier, this person might not have the same level of expertise on HVAC controls as a controls technician. So the solution must provide the actionable information to verify performance or diagnose equipment and control issues in a simplified way so those with less controls experience can be successful. In a multiple zone control system, there are many options. Zones can have sensors with no adjustment capability, so control can be centralized in a manager's office, reception area, or nurse's station, for example. Or sensors can enable set point adjustment or even after hours overrides. Adjustment can be limited to a few degrees or can be secured and accessible only to those who have a PIN code. Centralized control offers the benefit of schedule and set point coordination and oversight for store managers and administrators. Distributed control offers users wider local adjustments, but comes with the need for periodic oversight to maintain set points and schedules. So under this category of multiple zone systems, a VAV terminal is required for each zone. In the two changeover systems, these terminals often do not include heat, but it can be provided as an option to improve comfort and flexibility. In this table, I'm showing the VAV system with terminal heat in the two far right columns, one in which electric heat is used and the other hot water. As mentioned, a bypass damper is required in a changeover bypass system, and one may be required in a changeover VAV system too, depending on the type of heater used in the rooftop unit. Now, in our example branch bank, we only use one rooftop system for the whole building but other buildings might use several rooftop units depending on their size, load characteristics, and function. And even in smaller buildings, it's not uncommon to find a mixture of these system types. For example, a warehouse area might use a single zone VAV rooftop, while the adjacent office area might be served by a small changeover VAV system. Thanks, guys. Now that we've talked about the different control approaches for these small rooftop systems, there are a few other control capabilities that the owners of these systems may desire. Specifically, we want to mention optimized control for energy savings and secure remote access. So John, can you tell us a little about optimized controls? Sure. Using some of the more advanced control approaches for these small rooftop systems makes it possible to implement optimized control strategies that reduce energy use while improving occupant comfort. Now, we're not going to dig into the detailed sequences today, 
just making sure you're aware of which strategies apply. The first is optimal start and stop. This strategy can be used with any of the systems we just discussed. Now, during hours when a building is expected to be unoccupied, the HVAC system is typically shut off and the zone temperature is allowed to drift away from its occupied set point. Rather than starting back up again at the same time every day, optimal start determines the length of time required to bring the zone from its current temperature back to its occupied set point. Then it waits as long as possible before starting the system so that the zone reaches set point just in time for scheduled occupancy. This strategy saves energy by not heating or cooling the building too early. Now a similar strategy called optimal stop determines how early the heating or cooling can be shut off so that the temperature in the zone will not drift more than a few degrees by the end of scheduled occupancy. This strategy further saves energy by allowing indoor temperatures to begin drifting early. Note that only cooling or heating are shut off. The supply fan continues to operate and the outdoor damper remains open to continue ventilating the building. The next optimized control strategy, fan pressure optimization, only applies to a changeover VAV system or a multiple zone VAV system with terminal heat. In these systems, the rooftop unit controller varies the speed of the supply fan to maintain static pressure in the ductwork at a desired set point. Fan pressure optimization uses the system control panel to pull all the VAV controllers, looking for the terminal unit with the most open damper. Then it dynamically resets the duct static pressure set point as low as possible until one damper is nearly wide open. This allows the supply fan to deliver the required airflow at as low a static pressure possible. This results in less fan energy use, greater supply fan turndown, and a reduced risk of fan surge. The next strategy, supplier temperature reset, also only applies to a change or VAV system or a VAV system with terminal heat. But the purpose and approach used for resetting the supplier temperature set point differs between these systems. Remember, in a change or VV system, the rooftop unit delivers either cool air or warm air to all the VV terminals. Resetting the supplier temperature set point can be used to improve overall comfort in the building and maybe even reduce the number of times that the rooftop unit switches between cooling and heating modes. As I described earlier, when the rooftop unit is delivering cool air, any zone that requires heating will close its VAV damper to minimum airflow set point. Resetting the supplier temperature set point upward will help reduce the amount of overcooling in any zone that currently requires heating. On the other hand, when the rooftop unit is delivering warm air, resetting the supplier temperature set point downward would help reduce the amount of overheating in any zone that requires cooling. The control system can be used to monitor the cooling and heating demands of each zone, and then dynamically reset the supplier temperature set point to maximize overall comfort. So for a change or VAV system, the primary goal of resetting a supplier temperature is to improve overall comfort, but it can also save energy. Now let's look at the other system, VAV with terminal heat. Remember, in this system, the rooftop unit delivers air down the duct at a cool temperature year round. Resetting the supplier temperature upward at part load conditions from, let's say, 55 to 60 degrees, for example, can reduce compressor and reheat energy use. But it increases fan energy and can result in elevated indoor humidity levels. Therefore, for this system, supplier temperature reset should be implemented with the goal of minimizing overall system energy use, considering this trade-off between compressor, reheat, and fan energy. Now, the last optimized control strategy is demand control ventilation. Again, this strategy can be used with any of the systems we discussed today. Demand control ventilation resets outdoor airflow delivered to a zone based on the changing population thereby reducing the energy needed to condition excess outdoor air. 
For a single zone system, this sequence is typically implemented in the rooftop unit controller. A carbon dioxide sensor is installed in the zone or sometimes in the return air duct. Then the position of the outdoor air damper is adjusted to reduce outdoor airflow during periods of partial occupancy. Now we produced an ENL on demand control ventilation just last year, where we talked through the details of this control sequence for both constant volume and single zone VAV systems. It's listed in your bibliography if you want to dig into the details further. Now for a multiple zone system, there are a few different approaches for implementing demand control ventilation, each with its advantages and drawbacks. A common approach using these smaller systems is to just install a CO2 sensor in the common return air duct and use this single measurement to adjust the outdoor air damper in the rooftop unit. Since the system serves multiple zones, this sensor measures the average CO2 concentration of all the zones. So some zones may be underventilated, while others may be overventilated. But for smaller systems with only a few zones, this might be acceptable. If there is a zone that differs significantly from others though, one way to improve ventilation performance is to install a CO2 sensor in that critical zone, zone three in this example diagram. Here, the outdoor air damper is controlled based on the average CO2 concentration measured in the common return duct. But if the CO2 gets too high in zone three, the damper in its VAV terminal modulates further open, increasing airflow supplied to this zone. Now this does result in more outdoor air delivered to zone three, but increasing this flow rate of cool air causes the zone to overcool. So this VAV terminal should be equipped with either electric or hot water heat. While not common in these smaller sizes of rooftop equipment, if the unit is equipped with a means to directly measure outdoor airflow, there are other possible approaches for implementing demand control ventilation. Again, refer to the ENL we produced last year for more details. Thanks, John. Now we've mentioned remote access a few times today. Melissa, can you talk a little bit more about this? Let's discuss some examples of how remote access can be valuable. Remote access can be used for changing a set point, adjusting a schedule, or to receive maintenance alerts. For example, a congregation member calls the church volunteer responsible for maintenance and needs the classroom HVAC turned on, but forgot to schedule it. The volunteer can pull out his or her phone and make a temporary override, a temporary schedule change, or even a permanent schedule change as the situation dictates. Even better, more sophisticated systems are capable of scheduling calendar events rather than a repeating seven-day schedule. So if the class will take place on a reoccurring schedule over the next three months, that event can be scheduled on the specific dates it will take place. Remote access is also valuable for service technicians. Rooftop unit and VAV data is available for troubleshooting and to make system adjustments. Prior to arriving on site, a technician can assess the issue, determine severity, and arrive prepared with the necessary tools, parts, and instructions. Some issues may even be able to be resolved remotely, saving time and improving client satisfaction. For example, a client complains that a particular zone is always warm. A technician accesses the system remotely and determines if the zone is maintaining set point or can examine trend logs to see if the problem is chronic and make adjustments like changing the minimum or maximum flow set point on a VAV box to address the concern without driving to the site. While clients want the convenience of remote access, specifying engineers should be aware of the cybersecurity implications. The chart on the left shows that IT managers and building owners believe that remote access is important to the reality of their business while the graph on the right shows that these same people are also concerned about security. Often this can mean limiting or not allowing remote access, but a balance between convenience and security does exist. Bring up the conversation about remote access with a client early in the process. This helps understand your client's expectations about how they will use their system and the implications for network design. Let's walk through four best practices. First, Specify secure network design. Always isolate a BACnet control system from the public internet behind a firewall. 
and use virtual networks to separate business systems from HVAC control systems. Second, the main benefit of connectivity is the remote access we've been discussing. Customers should use virtual private networks for remote access. Independent networks can be set up using a cellular router for physical separation as well as remote access. And many manufacturers offer secure cloud portals for user authentication and management. Understand how remote access will be accomplished so contractors can include the same scope in their bids. The third best practice is in regard to passwords. This one might be the hardest because it is about behavior. Use strong passwords, which can include special characters, an expiration, and so on. You can specify this as a required product feature. And remember, passwords shouldn't be shared and access should be removed when no longer needed. Finally, specify software maintenance. All of these controls options, whether they be Wi-Fi thermostats or small building control systems, are basically computer systems that require regular updates to remain secure. Require software maintenance be included in your proposal for your clients. Today we discuss various approaches used to control these rooftop systems. And with any project, it's important to properly specify the controls to ensure customers get what they expect. However, for many small building projects, the budget and timeline often don't allow for full detailed control specification. So in that case, specifying engineers look for shorter, simpler means of documenting project requirements. Here's an example of a, an abbreviated control spec that's available from train through our zoned rooftop systems offering. It's intended for you to copy right onto the project drawings. It's only two pages long, this first page contains the guide spec for the control system itself, covering general functionality, BACnet interoperability, requirements for the operator interface, including mobile apps and remote access, and wireless communication. The second page contains sequences of operation for the different types of small rooftop systems. As we mentioned, even in smaller buildings, you often find a mixture of these system types. So there's a section describing the sequence for each of the systems we discussed today, and then you can just delete any system that's not being used on your specific project. In addition, on these smaller projects, many engineers include notes under the equipment schedules in place of the detailed equipment specifications that are often used on larger projects. In the example shown here, these notes for the rooftop unit and VAV terminals clarify the key requirements for the equipment and its control, what options must be included, and what sensors must be provided. But sometimes customers might still want a more detailed control spec, even for a smaller project. In that case, flow sketches, points lists, and more detailed sequences are also available. Just ask your train account manager. Well, we hope you enjoyed the CNL program today and that you found it a helpful way to learn about small rooftop system controls. As always, the bibliography included in your handout provides more information on where to find a number of resources related to today's topic, or contact your local train account manager for specific information on train systems and controls. For those of you seeking continuing education credit, be sure to check out our continuing education programs, which include many past ENLs, all free and on demand. And please remember to fill out a survey and let us know what you thought of today's program. AIA members, turn in your information to your local site coordinator for credit. And finally, please ask your local host about the details for the upcoming Engineers Newsletter Live programs this year. Thanks for your time today. We look forward to seeing you next time.